Hi, everybody. This is Gail Minogue, their numerologist, and today I'm speaking again about reincarnation. I did part one. I also wanted to make sure that if you're trying to see part one of reincarnation, just look at my other video. It's there. You will enjoy it. It is worth your time. I wanted to continue with part two and give you more information on the time that you spend here and what you can do prior to leaving. The other idea you want to get across is that you created the life you are living. Nobody created this for you. You did. Obviously, prior to birth, you created the blueprint or the plan. And then as I said, you uh, this was planted subconsciously into your parents' mind to give this to you at birth. So you name yourself. Now, second thing about your name, which has your destiny, personality, oh, motivation, issues, karma, everything is in the name that you created prior to birth. Now, when you are here and you spend more time here, you may not like your name, you may not want to use your name, and that's perfectly normal. You can call yourself anything you like while you're here. The problem is you never lose the original blueprint, which is your name at birth, registered at birth. Even if it's just Johnny Doe, it's your name at birth. Now you could add to that and you will live like a dual track, but the original one never, never leaves you. So always pay attention to the registered name at birth, even if you don't like it, even if you're adopted and your name is changed later. Very important to know that. If it's adopted and changed later, you will operate on this new name with the issues. However, you're always playing that old one and you're always working on that old one. You have to know the old one. It's very important because the things that appear in your life, the challenges, the temptations, it's all in that name. So you really want to make sure you just didn't land here and go in the dark. Nobody sets out on a trip usually unless they know where they're going. And a lot of people, they just land here and they have no idea where they're going. And then their parents tell them when they're a certain age, you need to be a doctor. You need to do this. Or you're, you're, we're going to make it hard for you to be a doctor. Blah, blah, blah. The issues are all there. So when you come in, okay, remember I said in my first video how you design the body, the gender that you would use here and how it would work here. And we come in sometimes with, with corrections that we want to take on from prior lives. The biggest reason we come here is to the earth plane. Remember, it's the soul we're talking about. It's on its own journey. It doesn't care whether you're a banker or you're a millionaire or a bum. It's on its journey. You have a personality, which is in your consonants of your name, vowels, which is your soul's number. It's showing where you've been, what's information, what talent you're bringing in, and what drives you, what's the driver. If you ever want to know how a person works, Look at their soul number. Look at the vowels in their name. It's going to tell you how they want to operate here, what drives them, the motivation. And then your entire name is your destiny. So you're on a road, and that's timing in the date of birth, and it takes you to what? Your destiny that tells you right there what's your name at birth. So you have to have somebody help you, which could be me. I'll be glad to help you figure that out. Very important. So you stop wasting time here burning out your energy package because everybody's given an energy package at birth, okay? You came through a certain constellation when you were born. You have to understand the energy of that constellation and how the planets were magnetized at the moment you took your first breath. So say, when I came in, I came in through the sign of Aquarius. So I have to learn the lessons of the Aquarian, even though I have a I have all these numbers, I have to know what my energy package is, and that's my energy package. I'm an air sign, I'm an Aquarian. And then I need to know all the rest of the energy package. Where's my moon? Where was it when I took my first breath? So that's very important. You're magnetized by that planetary system when you took your first breath. So in you come, and people say, well, I'm, I'm, an, I'm a Sagittarian, or I'm a Libra, or what have you. All we, but, but they're really talking about their energy package. So we have a number basically from your date that you decided to arrive here. You decided when to arrive here. Nobody else made this in. You can have a cesarean 
that was your decision. It's just like fine tuning. Well, I can't. We we can't get through with just natural labor. We're going to have to switch to a cesarean, or we're planning a cesarean. Okay, so all these things are designed for your arrival here, even being adopted out. It's all arrived. It's all in an order. So when you come in, you work with the name, you work with the date of birth. The date of birth will give you your timing on things. So for instance, 2024 is eight. Two plus two plus, you know, four plus zero and is eight. Okay, so we have a number eight universal year. Now you have to figure out, well, what's my personal year? That's from your month of birth and your day of birth. Add it to that universal year. That's going to give you your personal year. So you're on your own time frame is what I'm trying to say. And you need to know. That's to help you. So you don't start things in an ending period. It's like Farmer Brown who's going to go out in the field in January and he's going to plant seeds. That's ridiculous. If you know better, you will wait till spring and plant. Now that's what we want to know better in our own lives so we stop screwing up or we get knee deep in an area we really don't want to do, but we'll do it. You remember the, the doctors who end up being doctors who really don't want to be doctors and they don't want to put up with all that stuff and they end up being doctors anyway? And it, you know, it's like, what was I here really to accomplish? And so that's what you're going to get with your date of birth and your name at birth. A blueprint is 120 years. Until we do enough soul cycles here, which is every seventh birthday, every seventh birthday, we go through a soul cycle. And I've, that's on another video I have, understanding your soul cycles. This is very important. Every seventh birthday. You need seven of these cycles to be integrated enough here. So you kind of understand the successes and failures and issues before you're integrated enough. That's called integration. Have the body, mind, and emotions work together. Otherwise, we're all emotions, or all just physical, or we're all just intellectual and minds walking around. So it's that integration that we need. And that takes about 50 years. 50. So when we come out of the gate and we're going to write our memoir at 32, that's a bunch of bull. There's all these people writing memoirs that haven't even lived yet. Now, some people are exceptional and they're very advanced, but that's not the norm. There are people who really just want to sell a book or they're going to teach you, sell, tell you something and they haven't really lived their life out. So it takes, again, 50 years to come out more integrated. It takes 30 years of your time here to get out of childhood. And those are all, go back to my video on soul cycles and tell you how they each work, what they're intended to do. And you got to get through seven of these at the age of 49 to really be integrated, to start, you free yourself at 50. So 50, here we are working along. We came out into our adult life at 30 and we planned, we probably wanted to be bankers or, you know, um, CPAs or architects or however, singers, whatever. And then we reached that 30 years of 60. We say, well, I'm going to retire now. I've worked hard. I deserve it. Blah, blah, blah. The soul has, it's like, what are you doing? Well, it's not what I plan. But the personality, the ego, say, well, I, I'm, this is the way society is set up. You retire at such and such because they give you that. I work for the government and I get 30 years and that's enough and I'm out. Well, did you ever do what you really wanted to do? Or did you just stay safe and responsible and take this job because you had to take care of kids? Whatever reason was, now what are you going to do for your real life? So many people get fat and sloppy and careless and lazy by the time they reach this stage because they haven't taken care of themselves. When you were born, you were given a physical form. Most likely it was in decent shape. You may have some, some genetic things that are going on, but that for the most part, most of our problems in middle age and older age is from neglect of the body, abuse of the body, no movement of the body, wrong diet, and overdoing. Because we only had one, one body. It's like a race horse. If you have an expensive race horse that you paid a fortune for, you would take care of it. You would maintain it. You would feed it right. You would exercise it right. That's what you were supposed to do with your physical body. You had one racehorse to run you through life, carry you on. By the time you get through 60, the racehorse is worn out. 
I was like, well, I deserve retirement. I've got a pension. And we're finding now, people find out now, fortunately, that there's more to life than getting a pension, having a job, or staying up late at night and, and drinking. You know, that's part of the experience here. Now what are we going to do from 60 to 90? And the more I talk to people, the less I hear, like, well, I don't really don't want to retire, but I don't know what I want to do. It's because they don't know about their blueprint. So you have this mature middle life, which you're kind of maturing, and then you have the real years of from 60 to 90, which are very effective. This is your harvest time. And what are people doing? They're, they're walking on their walkers. I mean, it, it is so common to see people basically degenerate when they get into their 60s and 70s. So you want to have a plan from 60 to 90, what are you going to do? Write it out. Don't get all over the place. Just say three, three things. What are you going to do? Make that your plan, like 30 to 60, 60 to 90. Then 90, after 90s, you can start to consider retiring. You will be healthier. You will take better care of yourself when you're young. It all starts when you're young. So this is kind of an idea for you to understand the dynamics and wonder of your having 120 years here. Wow, that's fabulous. So why would you cut it out at 60 or have no plan for the second half? Most people have no plan for the second half and they overindulge in the early part and they've burned up their, they're burning up their energy package. So I'm going to wrap this up so I don't just overload you. There's a lot more information on reincarnation and the karma that goes with it. But you can look at some of my YouTube videos. You can also get in touch with me, gailminogue.com and, and um, email me. Everything's on my website. Just email me and I'll be glad to answer. And I encourage comments. I love comments. Um, hopefully good comments, but heck, what the heck? Um, the one thing we also have to remember, we're not here to be liked. Don't, don't get wrapped up in being liked. It's very, it's, it's just something that we, we want to be. It's not so that we walk around angry or anything like that. We just don't need to always, quote, be liked. You want to be effective and you want to be wise. And wisdom really does win the day. People will think you as kind, patient, and powerful. That's what you want to be, kind, patient, and powerful. So we're going to talk another time. And I want to thank you so much for tuning in. And if you want to, March 9th, I'm doing a Zoom program. And I hope you can join us, please. I think you will always gain some new information. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.